Today's video is all about division using the partial quotient strategy. Many are familiar with the traditional algorithm when it comes to solving long division problems. However, according to Common Core, this strategy is not explicitly taught until the sixth grade. Instead, students are exposed to alternate strategies before being introduced to this method, one of them being the partial quotient strategy. And if you're wondering how this strategy works, well, let's take a look by solving a few problems. Here are a few tips to keep in mind when introducing this strategy to students. Have an anchor chart visible so that students can easily refer to it as a step-by-step -step guide. It's important for students who have had experience multiplying whole numbers by multiples of 10. Also, having an understanding of the relationship between multiplication and division will be useful. And of course, students will be even more successful with using this strategy if they know their multiplication facts. And here are some key vocabulary words that students should be familiar with as they work through this strategy. Let's start with this first example, 68 divided by 4. As step 1 indicates, students must think about what number when multiplied by the divisor will get us close to the dividend. Some students may become overwhelmed because they can't think of a number that can be multiplied by 4 to get to 68. So encourage them to think of their multiplication facts and to think of a fact that will bring them close to 68 without going over. A student may decide that 4 times 12 will get us close to 68. However, is it possible to get closer? Well, since students know their facts up to 12, we'll work with that number. We'll write the 12 right here. Then we'll follow with the second step, which is to multiply 12 times 4, which gives us 48, and then subtract, leaving us with a difference of 20. And since we have 20 left over and 20 is greater than our divisor, that signals to us that we must repeat the steps and continue to divide. Once again, thinking to themselves, what times 4 can get them to 20? And we have an exact fact for that, 4 times 5. Write the 5 there, making sure to line it up with the 1's place, and then multiply 4 times 5 is 20, subtract, and we end up with 0. In this last step, students just simply add up the partial quotients. Now that we have our answer, we know that 68 divided by 4 equals 17. With this next example, we'll be dividing a three-digit number by a one-digit number. So that students don't become overwhelmed by dividing by such a large number, I usually encourage them to narrow in on the first two digits and then to follow through with each of the steps. Students should think to themselves, what number can I multiply by 6 that can give me either 14 or at least close to 14. Thinking of their multiplication facts, they might determine that 6 times 2 can get them the closest to 14, which is 12. However, since we have a three-digit dividend, we must compensate for that by multiplying 6 by 20, which will give us 120. This brings us much closer to our dividend of 143. We can write our partial quotient of 20 right here, and then follow through with our second step, which is to multiply 20 by our divisor and then to subtract the difference from the dividend, leaving us with a difference of 13. And since 13 is greater than our divisor, then we can continue with more division. We will continue by repeating the steps, dividing 13 by 6, and ask ourselves what number times 6 can get us close to 13. And since we know that 2 times 6 equals 12, that will bring us closest to 13, then follow through with subtraction, leaving us with a difference of 1. And since our remainder is less than our divisor, we can go ahead with our last step, which is to add up the partial quotients. Therefore, we know that 143 divided by 6 equals 22, remainder 1. In our last example, we'll be dividing a 4-digit number by a 1-digit number. As mentioned before, so as to not overwhelm students, I have them to focus on the 24 and then think to themselves, what number times 7 gets us close to 24? The fact 7 times 3 gets us closest to 24, giving us a product of 21. However, since this is a four-digit number, I will need to compensate for that. If students were to reason that 7 times 30 could possibly be a partial quotient, they would notice once doing the computation that it equals only 210. Again, we have to get close to 2,418. So then they should reason that 7 times 300 would be more appropriate, giving us a product of 2,100. 
which is much closer to 2,418. The partial quotient of 300 should be written right out here. And then we should move along to our second step, which is to multiply the partial quotient by our divisor. 300 times 7. And then subtract to find the difference. And since we have 318, which is much greater than our divisor, then we'll move on to our third step, in which we'll continue to divide. Again, students should focus their attention on the first two digits in 318, the 31. And think to themselves, how close can I get to 31? The multiplication fact, 7 times 4, can get us 28. But again, I must compensate since I'm working with the three-digit number. And recognize that 7 times 40 would be more appropriate, giving us a product of 280, which is much closer to 318. Remind students that as they line up their partial quotients, they want to line them up according to place value. After writing the 40, we then multiply it by 7, giving us 280, and then subtracting that from 318, leaving us with a difference of 38. And since 38 is greater than our divisor, we must continue to divide and think, well, what factor times 7 can get me closest to 38? The multiplication fact 7 times 5 can get us the closest, giving us a product of 35. Again, we'll make sure to line up that 5 in the 1's place and proceed with our multiplication, giving us 35, and our subtraction, leaving us with a remainder of 3. And since we know 3 is smaller than our divisor, we know we stop and we're ready for our last step, which is to add up our partial quotients, leaving us with the sum of 345 and a remainder of 3. Here are a few reminders to keep in mind. Although this strategy is different, it is closely linked to the traditional strategy. So if students are struggling with the algorithm, consider giving this a try. It is also important to note that there is more than one way to get the correct answer, as you can see in these examples. And be sure to take a look at the description box for related videos and links to resources used in this video. And as always, thanks for watching. And to continue to support my channel, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, take care.